Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining. Um, can you give us five minutes while we continue to set up on YouTube and those on Zoom land? Same as well. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, and welcome to our and welcome to our workshop uh, on how to start your own NGO or social impact organization. We're going to start formally. However, we're going to give a number for other change agents some time to join us. So we're going to give them another two minutes or so. If you have a friend who was interested in this particular workshop or a classmate or just a group, or you know, there are a few persons in there that would enjoy this kind of setting, just send them the link in the chat or just remind them that we are starting now. You can also tell them that we're also, well, we will also be going live on YouTube as well as soon as our speaker gets here. So you can let them know that they have the choice to join us here live, which is best place, I think, because you're able to ask your questions, you're able to engage, or for whatever reason, they're allowed to join, or they're able to join us via YouTube, or they can watch the YouTube recording after, because it will be posted there on our UWE Commuting Students YouTube platform. All right, so good evening, everyone. My name is Christina Williams. I am the I am one of the captain of the Change Makers Club, hosted uh, by the University of the West Indies Mona Commuting Students Office. And for those of you who may be new 
to this particular program. What it is, is a service learning and civic engagement program where students like yourself who are interested in change making, you want to do more and be more in your communities, in your country, in your world, through social impact work, you're able to come on board, you're able to attend these different workshops. It's one workshop per month as well as for students who would have registered for the entirety of the program, they are allowed or they are facilitated um, to be placed, whether self-placed or placed by us at different social impact organizations. <clears throat> so some of you would have been attending these workshops from last semester, would have had three workshops last semester, one in September, one in October, and one in November. We would have talked about leadership and how it is that you can build out and advance your leadership skills. We would have talked about social media and how you can use social media as an agent for good, as well as I think the other session was about it's not coming to me right away. I'll remember it soon. But we had a very good time, very exciting workshops. We had great speakers coming in. I think we had two international speakers. It's funny, I can't remember the speaker, I can't remember the session. We had two international speakers and we had one local speaker. Oh, I remember uh, the other workshop was about how it is that you can actually get involved in your community in a very practical way right so those are the three workshops one about leadership one about how you can get involved in your communities and the other one was about social media for good so we had two international speakers and we also had a local speaker we had a great time last semester and now it is that we are at second semester and i also want to welcome you this is our first session for this semester so even though we have been back at school since january this is my first time talking to you so welcome back i hope the, the assignments and mid semesters coming up, not having you feel too anxious just yet, right? So today we'll be talking about how to start your own NGO, which means non-governmental organization or social impact organization. And we will have another workshop next month, that's March, that will talk about grants writing, as well as how to write for sponsorships, I just fundraise for your NGO. So you see how we did the thing? We start talking, we're talking about leadership, how you get involved in leadership. Then we talk about how you can get involved in your community. And then talk about how you can use social media because once it's that you're out there doing good, more than likely you want to get the information out there, even if it's not about yourself, but even about your organization. Then we talk about how it is that you want to start your own organization or you want to register it, which is today. And then you have your organization know how you want to fundraise for it, how you want to get a little money, you know, secure the bag, right? How you want to secure the bag for uh, your, your organization. So you see how very layered this program is as well as very useful it can be because it prepares you at every step of the way in terms of how it is that you figure out what you want to get involved in, get involved with, how it is that you go about actually getting involved and then how to fundraise or fund your chosen involvements. All right, so, I am going to allow Ms. Larmond, which is our Student Service Development Manager for the Community and Students Office, just, just quickly, one minute or two, just to welcome you back to semester two, as well as back to the Change Makers Club program. And then after her, I am going to have uh, a Daisy, which is our new co-captain. For those of you who have been here last semester, you know I was the only person managing the program or a new co captain just to introduce herself briefly as well. And I think they will be done within the next five minutes, six minutes tops, and then we'll go right into our speaker, who I promise you guys, you're really, really going to enjoy his presentation. So Ms. Larmon, starting off with you. Hi, everyone. So good afternoon. Well, good evening. And I would just like to say, you know, welcome to all the change makers that are here this evening. And welcome to persons who are joining us for the first time. Um, as well as, you know, I, I see some other persons who are, uh, you know, members of the guild, as well as members from the commuting students committee and, and some staff members. So I'd just like to say welcome to our session this, um, this year, welcome back. Um, this is the first time I'm speaking to most of you. Um, happy New Year. Well, it would be Chinese New Year right now because we're in February. But Happy New Year to all. I hope you have a productive year. I look forward to seeing you engaging in the Change Makers Club, coming out to our sessions and just engaging us on our different platforms. 
Um, so good night. Hope you have a good session. I know there's a lot, there's lots in store for you tonight. So you can take away little nuggets. You can, and by the end of this session, you should be able to be empowered to start your NGO. Back over to you, Christina. Christina, sorry. That's okay. Thank you so much, Miss Larmond. And now moving over to Daisy, which is our new co-captain for the Change Makers Club. Hi everyone. So my name is Adeze and you all don't know my face. So now, you know, we introduce ourselves to each other. I'm really happy to be here. Looking forward to this session and hoping that we all learn, you know, no matter how much time you spend in a game, you could always learn something new, right? So I'm hoping that we know we all learn something new and special and we put it to good use. Okay. All right. Take care. All right. Thank you so much, Adeze. So while it is that our speaker joins us, I am going to just ask for a vibes check in the chat really quickly, because I know some of us would have had a long day of classes. I don't have classes on Mondays, but I do. Today, I actually had a number of meetings. So I came in from a meeting right just before this one started. So I know some of us are a little tired. You're a little, you know, groggy. We're thinking about dinner time. We're thinking about the assignments we're going to have to do after this session. So just about checking the chat really quickly. How exactly you're feeling if you're excited for the session or just however you feel while our speaker joins us. Come on, guys. I'm supposed to be seeing the chat going off, you know. Shara is excited for the session. Ashley is excited. Good. Keep it coming. Also, while everyone is, you know, dropping in the chat how they feel, I also want to welcome our change agents from YouTube. Hi. Right. Welcome. Thank you for joining us on YouTube. And for those of you who will be watching this after the live session, also welcome. Thank you for watching our recorded session. I hope you will enjoy and learn. All right. So we're here, happy to learn, happy to be here, very excited. Sophia's like tired, I am also tired, Sophia, but ready to learn. Pauline is happy to be here, I love that. And I really hope that by the end of this session, the vibes will be up even more, right? And we have all had an exciting time. Okay, I wanna check in on my speaker to ensure that he's here. Ah, my speaker is here. He's live and direct. All right, awesome. So I'm going to do a brief introduction because I'm sure you'd want to know who is this gentleman by the name of Diara Zai Freckleton? So I will start off by saying I've known DI for a while. He has been very active in the volunteerism and advocacy spaces. He's one of the more mature youth. I use the word mature youth because you know youth is a, you know, it's it's a scale, right? So I thought it's important to have someone of his experience here that even though he's still a young person, he still has some maturity and experience where you can learn as much as you can um, from his, I would like to say story, because even though he'll be talking to us about how to start an NGO and how to go about registering all of those things, I'm sure he's going to be giving you a little bit of his background, a little bit of his story as well, so you can see how it is that you as a young person out there who wants to get involved can do so just as I was able to do. This year, DR was awarded as a Sajikor community hero, which is a big deal. Sajikor would have chosen 50 people from across Jamaica, 50 out of, what is it, 2 million people, to say that they are doing tremendous things in their community, particularly around the pandemic and just other um, initiatives and causes. And he was one of the persons who was selected and awarded by Sajikor. He's also a governor general, I believe, ambassador, and the governor general would have chosen or continue to choose a number of individuals who they think exemplifies their mandate, which is that everything that's good with Jamaica, there's nothing wrong with Jamaica that cannot be fixed by what is right with Jamaica. And Biarazai exemplifies that. And so he was selected by the governor general himself to be one of his ambassadors, one of his IBI ambassadors. Biarazai is also a business coach, he's a speaker, and he's a director of the International Youth Society. So you see what I'm talking about? He has a plethora of experience in different areas, 
And that is why he's the perfect person to speak to you this evening, just for 15 to 20 minutes about how it is that you start your own NGO or social impact organization. And at the end of his presentation, he will allow you to ask him a few questions as well. So Bia, the floor is now yours, take it away. All right, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Christina. Um, good evening, guys. Well, and I'm just experiencing a little bit of problem. If you can hear me, good evening, everybody. If you can hear me, just put one in the chat. If you're able to hear me and hear me properly, just type one. Awesome, awesome. Welcome, welcome, Brittany. Okay, okay, okay. Welcome, y'all. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, um, this, this evening, I have a, a little bit of a um, a little chat with you on, you know, what really does it take to to, to start in your own um, non-profit organization or, you know, your your impact organization. Okay, I see you. Is that Akelia Kenton? I see you. I see all of it. Don't worry, sir. We got a chance to, 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 to chat a little later on. Um, I am a little bit still, still just coming off the road, extremely busy. I just took a moment to go on wash my face <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm still pretty much not settled but i'm really happy for this opportunity and for the next maybe 10 minutes or so um I, I i just want to share a little bit of things with you i i have a small slide that i just want to use as a guide so that you could um follow um i didn't plan to use it and if you hear a lot of noise in my background my dogs are having you know i feel the day outside so forgive me for the noise um but i just want to talk to you a little bit about um angel a little bit about myself um in addition to what christina would have said earlier on i i am the proud owner of a non-profit myself um white pack network which is a young people advocating network um we launched in the year 2013 um, at first, when we started, we were just um, a, 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 a CBO, a community-based organization. Then we went to be an NGO. Um, when we started, it was called JROP for Jamaica Youth Rise Up. And then we changed to Youth for Change. And then we realized that there was another organization which came after us. And they decided to still use our name. They called themselves Youth for Change Foundation. I didn't really want to have um, any, in, any sort of nuance or any sort of confusion and so the the board we decided and you hear me use words like board and that's going to come in later on and we decided to change the name to um YPAC, which stands for young people advocating change network we are now in nine countries um we are we are about to sign a, a you know an, an mou with um international peace youth organization over in washington dc for us to have our 10th country joining our network um and our thing is to really impact change not just um where jamaica is concerned but we're actually looking at the global young young person how we can impact change their about so um a couple of things i'm a justice of the peace i'm a young man as you can see i am I, i'm young i love the lord I, I i am a christian and um i believe that that's one of the things that has been fueling me going forward i'm not saying i'm not preaching to anybody here but it stands for something when you believe in something other than just yourself. So I don't know who is going to believe in their own dreams going forward, but I would really like to share my screen just to start. Oh, my Lord. Can you share? Are you allowed to share? I'm there. I'm not certain as yet. I'm not even I'm not even sure how this is going on. I look at I think you should look at the dashboard on your screen where you see participants chat. You should see a uh let's icon to share screen all right just give me 10 seconds um all right i was just locating all right so share screen good i think it is disabled ah uh, it's disabled okay so i'm gonna ask the host to please make the yeah, co-host please so you'll be allowed to share and in this in the meantime between time um is it You can go ahead now. All right, thank you. All right, lovely. Um, oh 
Jesus. All right, so I think I'm there. Can you now see my screen? Can anybody see my screen? Yes, we can, but I think you have to put it in yep. slideshow yep. mode. I will. Okay. I will. I just wanted to okay, know. But we can see it. Mm -hmm. All right. So you're seeing what I'm seeing now, just this. Yes, we are. Pretty. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So the, the question I probably wanted to ask um, the young persons who are here, um, you know, why do you want to start a nonprofit? So you really want to start a nonprofit, then you probably want to pre this um, little presentation that I have prepared for you. So <laughs> the, the question you may ask yourself, you may see other nonprofit organizations or NGOs or CBOs, and you probably have a burning um, desire to 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 to, to be uh, you know a catalyst for whatever issue may be in your own corner and you probably want to do this, but then um, are you really ready to start a nonprofit organization? No, I, I have three steps that I probably want you to see. Um, I have condensed some information into three basic steps that I'd really love for you to see. And at some point I may skip out of the presentation because I would have, um, you know, half cooked it so to speak so the imp information provided um in this particular presentation is really just to to be a guide for you the upcoming you know change makers and i normally say you know sorry you know people normally talk about the this person and the, that person of the world no i don't want any i don't want another you see both give me five seconds i am doing a presentation just give me give me 10 minutes sorry about that I have to pick up some person from church. Sorry about that. So, you know, I don't want any more Jeff Bezos's or any more Elon Musk's or any more um, Bill Gates. I want another, um, let me see some names who are in this chat. I probably want some other Alexandria Jones and I want an Amaya Lee Griffiths and Ashley Goldberg. Because I think we sometimes get it twisted that, you know, we probably want to, we want to emulate some individuals, but many people, because they have put some person on some pedestrians who would have started and, you know, would have groomed, you know, their own organizations that we don't think that we can eclipse these individuals. But I'm telling you that you can. So please note that the specific steps that I'm going to be giving to you, they vary from person to person or organization to organization, as well as also niche to niche, it varies. So the first thing you probably want to do as we move forward, Lord of mercy, what happened here? Good. So the first step that I want you to think about is to do your homework. Yeah, and I normally call it vision and faith because nothing is wrong with vision. Anybody can dream to do something or whatever, but if you do not have faith that your own dream can work, then you already have been defeated by your own self even before you start. So the, the, a couple of things that I love to tell persons to do when you're thinking about, you know, um, vision, faith, and doing your homework. The very first thing I normally, the very first step that I normally like to tell people to do is one, conduct a need, um, a needs analysis. And when I say you should conduct a needs analysis, what I want you to do is find out if organizations, which are maybe other nonprofits or could be for profits or even government organization, find out if there are others who are already doing the very same thing or similar work in the space that you want to do it. Nothing is wrong with others doing the same work that you want to do, but if it is in the same space that you want to do it, then it might be a problem because it will be harder for you to get support for your nonprofit, for your community-based organization, for your NGO, if you are just duplicating what already exists rather than improving or adding to those things that are already in existence. So it is very important that you conduct an analysis of the needs that exist and how you can then bridge those gaps. 
hope you're following also you need to also find demographic or population data that shows a need for the service that you want to provide and persons who go into new businesses they normally do this well persons who are serious about business they they do these sort of analyses so that they are in a position to provide the, the, the services adequately for you know whatever demographic that they want um, it also should explain how that need is not being met because if I see and if I I'm thinking about a particular need that exists in my own community I should then you know table something showing how that need is not met and how I can be um, a difference and then the question you can probably ask is where can I find the demographic information about my community and this is where we normally like to tell young people to always network always network and your network has a lot to do also with your network net worth the next question is is a non-profit right for you or is a non-profit right for the the need that you want to adjust you must understand young people that public charities they must be organized and operate exclusively for exempt purposes which set forth in you know the guidelines that govern governs you know the the the, the um the the, 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 the internal revenue code because if you are going to become a, a non-profit an organized non-profit there are going to be some documentation which should be attached to your organization to your project and you have to adhere to the different things which are in those projects and realistically you also need to find how many new non-profits that are even aligned already to get the grants that you are going for because that's another thing that we probably want to touch on later on because a couple of questions you may ask yourself can my business be a non-profit you know what are the advantages or the disadvantages of becoming a non-profit organization and this is a knowledge base that you need um, going forward because you may have a desire to to have something to solve a problem but a non-profit may not be maybe what you really are looking for is a profit for profit organization or an ngo might be because there's a thin line between an ngo and a non-profit organization so it, it, it's important for you to find out if a non-profit organization is the right fit for you going forward and then the next thing you probably want to ask on the, you're doing your homework you want to know the alternatives right so when we talk about that you have to understand that whenever you're forming a new nonprofit, it might sometimes be the most complicated way to act on your passion to serve your community because there are sometimes when nonprofits we, we, we really do not get the sort of um let's say kudos for want of a better word that we really really deserve and the biggest challenge for most nonprofits is that it is hard to sometimes develop and maintain reliable income streams i know it is called non-profit but even though it is a non-profit organization there still should be income streams ensuring that the organization stays afloat and estimates may vary from country to country or from region to region um even within ja the jamaican context it may vary from you know the urban rural suburban etc but most experts they agree that less than half of the non-profit startups survive beyond five years so less than five less than 50 percent of those non-profit organizations that you know them start up you know like, like like a light bulb but then most times they actually go out before five years and perhaps they it is said that one third uh, even if they go beyond five years, they are normally in financial distress because many persons believe that because it is a non-profit organization that you should not have income streams keeping. The thing is this, you know, young people, grants can bring your organization so far and no further because for the most part grants are specifically aligned to specific projects to specific programs and when those program timelines are met and the objectives are met and that grant is then cut off for, for, another, for a better word 
what do we do with the 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 employees or the volunteers and even though we, we say they are volunteers we still need to get our volunteers to different project sites and stuff like that so we need to find the alternatives now consider the alternatives that can let you essentially operate as a non-profit but with far less effort um and also far less cost because you can then focus your efforts on serving your community because right now while you're developing your experiences and support that will serve you well you not you must now understand that if you eventually decide to form a separate organization how am i going to stay afloat so know the alternatives that exist beyond um just the conventional non-profit terminology because I can tell you this, um, I, I have a document of um, you know the top one thousand nonprofits across the across the Western Hemisphere, and you would probably realize that those that are in the top half they always report um, profit margins, and they sometimes um, profit margins based on programs that they have in house to ensure that their organizations, the alternatives to just depending on a grant, so to speak, um, how am I going to stay afloat? For argument's sake, let me give you an example. In my organization, in YPAC Network, we have um, a program called the Sponsor Child Foundation. And in the Sponsor Child Foundation, what we do is that we ensure, I try to keep it as a, se a separate entity, but on the YPAC Network, we are like an umbrella organization because we host like the, we host the Hey Pro, which is a helper youth program, the Free to Dream Education program, um, the Sponsor Child Foundation. And then what we do is that, those different um, boards, they are mandated to ensure that they, we, um, the board, I would normally give a mandate, like, all right, cool, we need to do this for financial year 2022, 2023. And then they would then come up with ways how they are going to, you know, do their own fundraising activities and stuff like that. So you should then know the alternatives because depending just on grants, for your nonprofit organization will just leave you dead in the water. Hopefully I'm making sense to you who are here. So the step two, build a solid foundation. And when we're talking about building a solid foundation, there are three things that I want you to be mindful of. Um, one, you have to draft your own mission statement. Um, and we all know what a mission statement is all about because it, it is a critical first step that many people sometimes ignore. And when you ignore it, it's really to your own detriment. Um, it communicates your nonprofit's purpose. It communicates what the group will be serving, what, where, who, when, and why. Also, how that group will serve um, whomever or whatever um, the group sets out to serve. How it will serve these individuals. The mission statement also should also, in the finer details, every decision and action in your organization should support and further your mission. Your mission is to do this, and you're going to um, do it. Now, many persons normally ask, where can I learn about nonprofit mission statements? This is another step of you doing your homework. Um, because one of the things that I, 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 I particularly realize is that um, Nothing is really new under the sun. I know that people are now, now we're in web um, 3.0. We're now in the, the, the age where we're now past the information age. We're now in the knowledge-based age where persons can now monetize their knowledge. And what I realized, because I, I, I am an educational psychologist, and I was thinking of, you know, upgrading my skills and becoming a... Um, and becoming like you know like a principal for some university or some some something like that because that was probably a long-standing goal a far goal that i have but in, in my networking circles i realized that 
you know, persons with just a first degree um, in like educational psychology have started nonprofit organizations in different jurisdictions that focus on a specific aspect of education. Now, when, what I talk about that is when I was developing my, um, my mission statement for tutored, because I went ahead and I started my own, um, you know, my own organization that does in the educational um, um, niche. I, when I started tutored, I looked far and wide to other mission statements for persons who were in the same field as I. Look at how they achieved certain things. And sometimes you don't need to reinvent the wheel. And other times what you probably need to do is just really to, 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 to um, amplify what already exists. So persons would normally ask me, where can I learn about nonprofit mission statements? Think about the field that you want to get into, and then you can reach out to individuals who are operating in that field. One of the key best places to do it is social media, but not on Instagram. There's a place called LinkedIn that a lot of people don't go to because it's not the fun place. It's really the place for, um, for professionals and strategists and all of these people. Connect with those individuals, and believe me, you can get a ton of ideas. The next thing you want to do is to write a business plan. Now, persons normally, you know, shy away from writing a business plan because we normally think of it as a bulky, you know, 40, 60, 100 page document. But I can tell you that there is a one page business plan that you can learn. And I do have a video and I do have a blog where I teach people how to write a one page business plan that encompasses, you know, your organization's mission and reach and all these other things that you need. Because just as with any for-profit organization, a business plan can help you, your nonprofit organization describe how it intends to achieve its missions in a more specific, detailed way. It can also serve to be used as an outline um, for any new project or any new ventures. And if you need to know how to write a business plan for a nonprofit organization, you could probably just reach out to me on Instagram and I can probably send you a link to the blog. I can also um, um, get you some other resources, how you can write your one page business plan that also gets recognized by funding agencies. The next thing you want to look at is to develop your board as your nonprofit um, governing body, the board that you select should fulfill a variety of roles and not just that, but there are also some legal responsibilities that are going to be on your shoulders. And in order for you not to be worn down and burdened down like Atlas, you have a group of like-minded individuals who are also having different levels of expertise in different fields that you think you need, and then you, 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 you have responsibilities shelved right across the board. In order for you to carry out these duties effectively, the board will change as your organization grows and matures. And I keep telling people this, that if the, 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 the makeup and look of your board was the same in 2013 as it is in 2022, then your organization is not growing as it really should because the, the, the dynamics and the logistics and the methodologies are always changing and different unless individuals are growing with the, the, the times. And I also remember when COVID-19 became a reality and I realized that this thing is going to be with us until about 2025. One of the things that I did was that I decided myself and a group of friends, we enrolled in some free um, courses from Harvard Extension University. And what we did was that um, at the end, we all graduated between 18 to about 28 different certificates in the medical fields related to vaccine and immunology and all of these other things. Why? Because persons that we realize that, all right, a group of us, my, 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 my doctor, which is also my business partner, my attorney, which is also my another business partner of mine, we decided that let us get into pharmaceuticals. Let us get into, let, let, us, let us think about, you know, building a pharmacy you know, building and owning a pharmacy. And we also started a bottled water company because we realized that there are many Caribbean countries and other parts of the world that rely on bottled water imports. 
So we decided to go along, along the route. But the thing is that how we knew was because our boards kept developing and changing. There are some persons who are not changing with the times and we just had to let them go. So your board will probably morph and reshape and look differently as your organization grow. I know we sometimes like to talk about loyalty and we really want to, you know, to have friendship going along, but you need to figure out if you really want to have a nonprofit that is actually, you know, working or a nonprofit that is just a nonprofit on paper. So there are times when you, the, the board will change and functions will change or merge as your business grow and it matures. You know, while recruitment is also an important step in this process of the arm um, building and developing your board, you know, you have to include things like orientation and training, evaluation, and the cultivation of prospective board members. Because remember, as your board grows and matures, how are you going to ensure that there is a, you know, a continuation, succession planning? These are things that you would have to keep in the back of your mind. When I started YPAC, when we were YFC, um, I was the executive director. After a while, I realized that I, I am not the most tactful person. I am sometimes very tactless. And um, there are times when I really don't... Um, say the, the the nice things in the nicest possible ways and because there are times when i have a lot of different irons in the fire what i did was that i had someone to run the organization that was how the organization grew i i retained an executive chairman's position but i allowed persons who had more more knowledge than i did to run the board so even though persons would normally still want to connect the organization to me i realized that i would have outgrown the organization where it was and where we were going and i realized that i could focus my strengths in other areas so as your organization grows and develops and matures, I remember some years ago when Douglas Orain was the, 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 the chairman for Grace Kennedy, and he was doing an amazing and fantastic job. But as the board grows, Douglas Orain became the, the, um, the, was it an executive chairman? You know, and then I think it was one of those other individuals who came and took over the position as chairman. So, he was a chairman, but he was not the chairman of the day-to-day, -day, the, the, the board activities, because the organization grew and matured and, you know, outgrew, I would not say outgrew his usefulness, but there are persons who were coming into the fore who were more in tune with technology and with other aspects of the business that Mr. Orain would not be aligned in the same line. So maybe there are times when we are all singing from the very same hymnal, but there are times when we are not singing from the same hymnal number. So we have to ensure that as we go along, we developed, uh, we develop our boards so that critical um critical thinking and critically ensuring that your organization have long-term success that's important and the, the third and well there are five steps but i'm going to leave it at the third step incorporating your incorporating your i don't know why this is not coming up I, I, it's not coming up, so I'm going to leave it there. So incorporating your 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 nonprofit. Um, when you reach this step of your organization, my friends, it is time for you to find resources that are specific to your location. That was a mistake I made in my earlier years because when i was you know liaising with individuals from from st kids when i would you know the, the petitions and from other or from, from other um countries and when i was the national police youth club president and we lies with the st lucia we started a, a policy youth club in st lucia one in the cayman islands from right here in jamaica what i did was that i i started um 
I started looking at resources that they had in their location, wanting to implement things in my location that were outside of the remits of what my resources um, would be. So I, I, I fell down heavily for that. But I learned that I have to also look at um, the resources that are specific to my location. And then the best place to start is always by um, looking at other organizations who are doing similar work um, in jurisdictions that are similar to yours and then see how best the resources that you have could be human capital what resources you have going forward but the question persons may ask is why should i incorporate and I'm going to answer by telling you that having a formal structure will give your nonprofit organization credibility to the programs that you have and the services that you want to bring to the table. The corporate structure limits the liability of the organization's directors and officers. These are the legal responsibilities that we were talking about earlier on. Because you have to know, like, I mean, like internationally, you have like, the IRS. Um, which requires organizing, organizing documents. But in Jamaica, we have like the, the, the company's office and other organizers of the charity, um, organize um, the regulators who ensure that documentation and government policies and procedures are usually associated with the, the, those organizations and or corporations. Because for argument's sake, um, because we are internationally aligned, we have we have an arm of our organization that ensures that if we're going to um, donate a dialysis machine that we 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 we, we procure from you know Washington D.C. or from Ohio, etc., we are in governmental regulatory guidelines so that when we ship those items to Jamaica, we are not. Um, we, 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 we are not subjected to the same, you know, fines, etc. that may be associated with organizations or a single individual that may not be regulated. So there are some benefits when you follow the, the regulatory procedures in ensuring that you are compliant. So yes, you really should incorporate and you can learn about how to incorporate a nonprofit, you know, different filings and fees that will vary from organization to organization or from the type of organization to the type of organization. Um, also note that incorporation registers your nonprofit, um, but it does not make it a 501c exempt. No, that's that's another topic for another day. But there are ways that you could let your organization have that sort of exempt. You can also file for your tax exempt status because that's that's the big league now. So the 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 the, 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 the legal minds that you have for your organize. I remember that develop your board with the talents that you have. No man is an island. Don't try to do everything. That's something I tried doing in the past and it didn't work well for me. And I don't think it worked well for anybody else. I don't think UCM Bolt would would would, would run the same time. 36.8 um, for the four by one. If he did it alone, as much as he's the fastest man, um, you know, so we have to play by the strengths that we have. So you can apply for um, exempt status. Um, also, you can have other ongoing compliance. You can register with your country's agencies. You can prepare annual reporting requirements. You could get help with that. And again, it depends on what talents do you have on the board? What talents will you recruit for your board, for your organization that you want? And the last thing I want to tell you is to follow the rules as they relate to, um, as your country would have stipulated. What activities can jeopardize a nonprofit organization tax exempt status? Learn about those because I know of a particular group in my parish, Clarendon, that they were they, they were not complicit and they would have they, they lost their um, tax exempt. And you know, it created some 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 discord, you know, with membership and stuff like that. So I just really want persons to know that. Your idea that you have going forward is don't, don't ever think that it is irrelevant and you will have struggles. And if your organization is to become successful, you will have to go 
through your struggles. Don't try to go around or over your struggles. Try to go through your struggles because struggles are things that will always um, come in your way. But if you are able to overcome your struggles, you will then be admired. Remember, many persons around you, they may see you struggling and they, they sometimes do not admire your struggle until you become successful. I always tell persons that everybody have a story to tell, but people are only interested in your story after you have one. My favorite program for many, many years, in fact, I was called, um, you know, an ex-girlfriend that I had. She said that I am a very boring man because my favorite television program is Profile. The reason why I, I do not miss profile, well, I probably missed a lot now, but I did not miss profile back then as a child and as a young person coming up was because all of those individuals whom I have, I have admired were individuals who would have faced some struggle or another, but they became successful and they only went on profile after they became successful. I never saw anyone, anyone who was interviewed who they were... Um, not yet successful but they all oh, in you know in 2017 i'm going to run you know 9.58 in the 100 meters no it is after then persons become um you know intrigued by your struggles and they want to know so your non-profit that you are thinking about i'm pretty certain that it is going to be a success if you stick to it i believe in you you need to make your mark um, and if you do that, then we, you will be here sometime from now, either the president of something at UWE or wherever, or coming back to speak to some other young people about how they could um, also have successful nonprofit organizations or profitable organizations, CBOs or NGOs going forward. One of the reasons why I tell you that I believe in you is that I know that, um, I know, even if you do not know it yet, that three things that you will need to become successful in whatever your nonprofit or whatever three things the first thing is that you need to be relentless everything is going to come at you to derail you to halt your your your, your, your journey but if you just do not stop think about it if you come from school one day and you have been studying, you have, you had exams and you came and you just want to, you want to rest. And you go into your room. Yes. And you go into your room and you, uh, <laughs> you, you decide you're going to take a nap and somebody came to your door and they knocked. And then you, you decide that maybe if I don't answer, this person will go away. And then the person, because they didn't answer, they go away. But then there might be someone else who need something from you or need you for whatever reason and they came and they knocked. They didn't hear anything but they continue to knock. And you are just thinking to yourself that maybe if, you know, you know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds pass and you say nothing, they'll go away. But the person keeps knocking. After a while, you're going to be so annoyed that you're going to ask them, what you want and is that the very same attitude that you need going forward you know chasing your goal or dream non-profit profit or otherwise because there are so many persons who come upon a hurdle or two and then they stop now i remember some years ago when asafa um he broke his own record at world record at the time for 100 meters it was at the time it was 9.77 seconds and I remember in that race, Asafa stumbled at the beginning. So he stumbled at the beginning. He didn't break it. He equaled his own world record at the time. He stumbled at the beginning of the race, but did not stop and ended up equaling the world record at the time. Why am I saying this to you? It's because, yes, the statistics are true that there are many organizations that start and then after about three, four, five years, they are no longer. The same passion that you have going forward, keep that passion alive. The Bible tells Habakkuk 2 that we should write the vision and make it plain. Not many people believe in your vision, but your passion can then be transferred to other individuals. So be relentless. The next thing is that be hungry for it. Do not expect others to be hungry for your success if you yourself, you are not hungry for it. 
go for it. You know, do your homework, learn, lay the foundation, network adequately, look at what other people are doing, and then you may decide to either, you know, mirror or you may, you know, be, you know, tweak to be better than what already exists. And then the last thing that I want to tell you to do is that don't even be selfish. I know that in the, in the space that we're in sometimes, I know organizations and groups, you know, it's all about competing competing are not a lot of collaborating and you know it's the very same thing i'm saying my doctor he had a business that focused on something other than his 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 private practice he had another business that focused on something else but something in his business was in my line of work because i i, I am an advertiser um i am a marketer and a social media marketing um People call me expert, whatever. And I also in the cryptocurrency space, I have been in cryptocurrencies from 2016. And when he wanted certain things to do, he brought me in as a consultant until we became business partners that we are now 70, 30% um, shareholders in his business. Why am I saying this to you? Is that if he wanted to just compete, because we were competing in, in, a, in, in, a, in a sort of way, but he decided that collaborating would make more sense. And there are many youth groups that I know, many um, nonprofit organizations that we do a lot of collaboration. And it worked in all of our favors because no we do not have to you know be competing against each other for scarce spoils we can collaborate so i want to tell each and every individual on this particular call that as you go after you know trying to be change agents and you know erect and establish your nonprofit organizations be relentless not many people will believe in what you have i don't care what it is that you want to do if you believe in it and if it is viable and if there is a market for it you know you can be successful be hungry for it and there will be dark days that's why you have to be hungry continuously because don't expect to just start it no no you can start and fizzle out so be hungry continuously and then also ensure that you would network so you collaborate rather than just compete 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 I don't know if there are questions that you're probably going to ask me, but those are just my few words in the time that I was allotted. Thanks for having me. Wow. I mean, that was that was more than just a workshop on how to start your NGO. I mean, we got like a motivational speech right there. We're now powered fired up we're ready to go and start our own NGO social impact organization or whatever it is that we think is necessary for us to change lives in our communities I feel empowered I feel motivated I don't know about you but that's how I feel but I guess persons maybe you'll jump in the chat right now how they feel about uh Di's um presentation please because I'm sure he also wants some feedback and while you're doing that I'm going to also ask for technical team to drop the evaluation form in the chat, asking you to, to respond. Right, so I'm asking you to click on that link and just to go on. Right now, while we're on the, the call, it's nothing long, just to go on it and to ensure that you you indicate how is it that you felt the session went. But while it is that you're doing that, so we're doing a lot of things at once, while it is that you're clicking on the docs, the Google Docs form in the, in the chat, I would also want you to, if you have any questions before a DIR wraps a runoff, because I know his church friends are waiting on him to pick, to pick them up, you can ask any questions that you may have to DIR at this time, while also filling out um, the Google Doc to note how is it that you felt about this presentation? Okay, seeing as if we have no questions. All right, KP, if you missed the very start, that's fine. We have, we're currently live on YouTube, so you'll be able to go back and watch it on YouTube, the first part of it in case you missed anything.
So let me ask if anyone can tell me one of the steps that DI would have given us this evening on how to start our NGO. Anyone going to drop in the chat really quickly one of the steps that we would have learned from DI this evening on how to start our NGO? He gave us like three main steps, but then of course he gave us some sub steps on the Eden. So if you, if you only remember the sub step, you can put it there. I remember the general stuff, you can put it there as well. So Oksana is saying that conduct a needs analysis. Very good. Anyone else? I know Oksana was the only person who was listening right now. John needs to develop your board and you can't do everything yourself. Very true. Amaya Lee saying connect and detach. Francine McCarran talks about finding alternatives to an NGO. You may, right, you may decide, that, okay, an NGO may not be what is in your best interest in terms of fulfilling your mandate. You may need to think about some other kind of organization like a social enterprise or a for-profit organization, et cetera. Pauline says build a solid foundation. Very good. Um, and I love the examples that I would have given to us. Very relevant examples. So, you know, we have a lot to think about as we go forward in network and collaborate from KP, very good. Um, a lot for us to think about in terms of going forward as we decide to start our own NGOs and social impact organizations. Just to remember this as well, change agents, because that's the name I have for you, is that you may not necessarily want to start your own organization. And that is fine. Not all of us are meant to be founders. There's nothing wrong with that. And a lot of people in the world a very few of us are actually founders. A lot of us may want to be or prefer to, to be a part of something that's already started, or you want to start something with others. You may not want to be the founder of an organization. But why it is that an, a, a session like this is still important to you as a change agent or a potential change agent is because if you join an existing organization and they want to build out their organization, they want to make it better, they want to advance their mandate, Having had this session, you can identify things that the org may need to do to, go, to do more and to go further, right? So it doesn't mean that you have to be the one to leave this season and be like, okay, I'm going to start my own foundation. But you may be someone who now has the insight to contribute to an existing organization. So that's why I teach, well, here at the Change Makers Club, we teach at every level, or we give you the works at every level, because even though you may not, may not be the person who will start this organization, or be the person to be using the social media for good, or be the person who is going to be out there on the ground, you know what to look for. You have this full sum knowledge of every little thing, so you're, you're able to contribute to an organization if you so choose to, all right? So it's a, it gives you the option. And knowledge is for, as DI said, it's a knowledge-based economy that we live in. And so you can always utilize knowledge right now or years later or whenever you choose to because you have the information now and you know what to go and look for. You may know what to go and research more on because, of course, it's a crash course. There's so much more you can learn and will learn as you move through the change making space. Thank you so much again, Dia. There, there are no questions. So you're free to go at this time uh, to pick up your, your church, your church friends. Thank you so much once more, and I'll be in touch with you, Dia. Uh, pleasure is mine. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Well, give me a quick second. Najani asked a question. I didn't see it. Oh, yes, a question. What are some entries we can reach out to seek funds? Probably give me a quick answer on that. Literally, a lot. I mean, in Jamaica, we have like CVSF, which is a um, CVSS. They have a conference at Terra Nova on Thursday. So if you, there's so many that you probably want to go, they do a lot. Um, the Council for Volunteers, Volunteer Service, some, something like that. They do a lot of funding, stuff like that. I mean, if you're from Central Jamaica, there's a Central Jamaica Initiative, which does seek a lot of funding from agencies. You have, um, you have, um, you have the... The Canadian aid, you have the USAID. They're so, they are literally, so I have a book that have a literally over 1,000 um, agencies and organizations that you can literally get funding from right across the world. For Thursday, it is CVSS. I think it is the, the Lord forgive me. I, I need to go back. And it, it's I, the I, Council of Voluntary and Social Voluntary. Services. Yes. 
social services. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that's it. Con th that same one. They have um, a conference on Thursday at the Terra Nova Hotel, and, and it's free, free of charge. So that's just one area you could go to the voluntary social services. And believe me, when in 2015, they put me onto an, an, an entire host of organizations to help me. Um, I think at Terra Nova, it will be, I'm seeing the chat. Yeah, I think it will be in person. They also will have, they also will have um, virtual spaces, but I'm not entirely certain what that is. You could just connect with me on Instagram at dr underscore Freckleton, and then I'll pass on that information because the information is in my email. But um, Christina can probably tell you, I don't really, <laughs> I'm right. not the person with email. You can also check out, I think, well, not I think, CVS does have an Instagram page. So you could go and look on Instagram, CVSS, you'll see their flyers there as well. Yeah. Right. All uh, right. Thanks, guys. Well, thank have you so amazing. much again, um, DI. Thank you. And I know you have to go. So once again, a big, big thank you for the UE, from the UE Mona Community Students Office here and the entire UE Mona um, family, the students here at Change, um, the Change Makers Club, the admin and technical team behind the Change Makers Club, myself as captain of the Change Makers team. Thank you so much for being here, and I hope you have the remainder of an excellent evening. All right, the pleasure is mine. Blessings. All right.